OK. Hi, I am Xiao Mengyi. I'm a senior researcher in Zilis. It's my pleasure today to talk something about vector similarity search and indexing methods. First, let's begin with the vector similarity search. I think a couple of years ago, when talking about information retrieval or information search, most often we are referring to keywords-based retrieval. Typically, typically, search engines are built on texts. If we input some words, they will return most related textual information to us. But today, with the with the emergence of big, all kinds of big data applications, information retrieval has gone far beyond that. For example, we now have we now have image search engines that given an image as input, they will search similar images as a result and return, return them to us. We have we got a personalized recommendation systems that search interested items for us according to our profile and the browsing history. Scientists even search molecular structures to seek for medicines that, are, that can potentially cure disease. For all these, examples of modern information retrieval applications, they all share a common problem, that is how to measure the similarity between data. For example, if we, how to tell whether two images or two molecular structures are similar. This is where vectors come in, thanks to representation learning or what we call embedding techniques, almost everything can be transformed to vectors. Let's take image search as an example. We can train a neural network that transforms similar images to similar vectors. With the vector representation of images, the problem of image search is converted to it's converted to the problem of vector similarity search, which is also known as the nearest nearest neighbor search for vectors. Calculating vector similarities is a well studied prob problem. Uh, there, there are a bunch of metrics to measure the similarity between vectors. Among them, the, most, uh, the mostly used ones are Euclidean distance, cosine distance, and inner product. But when handling a large amount of vectors, the problem of efficiency arises. Typically, it will take a 32 core server around uh, several seconds to, to search among tens of millions of vectors. However, modern big data applications, some of modern big data applications would require to search billions of vectors within just a couple of milliseconds. To achieve required performance, most Solu most solutions resort to resort to indexing methods that perform approximate vector search. With with a moderate loss in accuracy, these methods can improve performance by orders by orders of magnitudes. Next we'll introduce three types of vector indexing methods for approximate vector search.
The first one, the first one is graph-based index. As we can guess from the name, the measured maintenance vector index in the form of graphs. Each node in the graph corresponds to a vector. And according to a predefined rule, edges are established among vectors. When a query comes, the search engine starts at a, either a random or fixed entry point. From the connect nodes of this entry point, the algorithm finds the, the one that is closest to the query node. The neighbors of this closest node are further investigated to find nodes that are even closer to the query. The algorithm proceeds like this, with, e with each step getting a little bit closer to the query. It stops when no nodes when no node closer to the query can be found. Most, most of graph-based indexes use similar uh, graph uh, search algorithms. Uh, and um, research efforts are mainly spent on, des on designing rules for connecting nodes. A well-designed age established rule can achieve a better trade-off between search performance and indexing cost. Okay, let's take a look at two detailed examples. For, for graphs where nodes are only connected to its close neighbors, edges tends to be short. There will be a disadvantage of long search paths. We need to visit many nodes along the path to get to the final result. One optimization is to add some long edges into the graph so that we can jump to the destination much, much quicker. Another optimization is building a multi-layered index where upper layers contain less number of nodes. For each node in the upper layer, it also appears in the lower layers. The search goes in a top-down fashion. In our example, it firstly searches layer two and finds find a candidate node. Then it goes down to the same node on layer one and searches on that layer. The algorithm repeats like this until it gets to the bottom layer. Compared with lower layers, upper layers tend to have longer edges. This allows the algorithm to get to close to the query very quickly, and then with more detailed graphs to search for the final result. The second type of index is based on space partition. As we can see from the examples, this method divides the vector space into multiple regions. For each region, the index maintains a list of vectors that belongs to it. When a query comes, the search algorithm firstly traverses all the regions to find promising regions that are likely to contain the result. Then it searches all the vectors in the promising regions in a brutal force manner to find the actual results. Note that the Query may be close to the boundary of regions. So usually multiple regions are searched to avoid missing candidate vectors. When using, when using space partition indexes, two choices are essential. The first one is how many reg regions to partition the vector space into. And the second one is how many regions to probe when we search vectors. Making proper choice is somehow tricky. If we increase 
the number of regions in the vector space, the size of each region would become smaller and the query vectors will be closer to the region boundary. To avoid this degradation in accuracy, we also need to probe more regions for searching. And recent research studies show that if we increase the number of probed regions and the number and the total number of regions at the same time, while keeping the ratio between them fixed, the number of vectors in the probe, probe regions will not obviously change, but the search accuracy will improve. This indicates that there's a chance for, op op for optimization if we can efficiently pick out regions to probe. The next one is encoding-based indexes. This type of index is designed to address the memory usage problem. Machine learning models typically generate vectors with hundreds or even thousands of dimensions. To achieve high performance, vector search engines need to store all vectors in memory. This would be costly to reduce memory footprint. Encoding-based indexes assign a relatively short code to each vector. The method is usually called quantization. For each vector, only its code is stored. A code book is required, required to record the meaning of each code. As we can see in the example, there are 10 vectors V0 to V9, and they are divided into three clusters according to their proximity. Each cluster is assigned a code, which is used to approximately present all the vectors in the cluster. For example, vectors from V0 to V3 are stored as C0. The center or average of original V0 to V3 are calculated and stored in the codebook as the meaning of C0. When a query, when a query queue comes, for, for all vectors in the cluster, their similarity to Q is approximately calculated as the similarity between Q and the C0. You can, we can see that the length of codebook or the number of cluster, clusters is important here. If the number of cluster, clusters is too small, many vectors will be encoded in the same code and the accuracy will be compromised. But if the number of cluster, clusters is too large, the cost of maintaining the code book will become high. Product quantization is proposed to address this issue. Let's look at a simple example in a four-dimension space. Firstly, each vector is divided into two sub-vectors, which is which, with each sub-vector corresponding to two dimensions. For sub-vectors in dimension one and dimension two, we conduct a quantization and get 10 codes. For subvectors in dimensions three and four, we do the same thing and get another 10 codes. Then each original vector can be represented as the joint codes of its two subvectors. In this way, we can get 100 joint codes while only need to keep, need to maintain two code books with, tw with 20 code entries in total. For vectors with higher dimensionality, we can easily save more memory by simply divide, 
by simply dividing vectors into more sub vectors. After introducing the basic ideas, we now compare different index types con considering performance, accuracy, and memory usage. Here, HNSW is a multi-layer graph index. L and C is an index that combines graph and encoding method. IVF is a space partition method. SQ and PQ are, the, are encoding methods. Flat refers to the brutal force search. In general, graph-based indexes are fast and accurate, but tends to have high memory footprint. Encoding-based methods are small, but have accuracy problem. While space partition methods can, can be either fast or accurate, depending on the number of regions to probe, we can see that there's no winner in all cases. Fast, accurate, and small is never achieved at the same time. Users need to carefully choose index methods according to their demands. In Zilis, when building Muvers, our open source vector search engine, we found that our users tend to have quite different preference on accuracy, performance, and cost. We have to maintain and optimize all kinds of indexing algorithms and even their combinations. This turns out to be complicated and costly. Therefore, therefore we are designing a unified layered framework that are flexible to combine different, combine different indexing methods. In our design, the framework contains three layers with different functions. Each layer can work independently, and we can optionally remove one or two layers according to the requirements of users. The first layer is responsible for space partition. It divides the vectors into multiple regions. In the search procedure, it finds the target regions that are close to the that are close to the query vector. The candidate filtering layer stores compressed web data for each of the regions. It traverses all the vectors in the target regions and get a bunch of result candidates. Since vectors are stored in a compressed form, the search accuracy is relatively low. So we need to get more candidates than user required and conduct a refined search in the next layer. The result validation layer maintains all the original vectors, but only the candidates from the second layers will be checked during searching. Only the candidates that are indeed close to the query will be kept in the result. The function and the requirement of each layer is different. So we need to apply proper indexing method and explore optimization opportunities accordingly. In the space partition layer, the data size is small. Typically for tens of millions of vectors, there will be around tens of thousands of regions, but it needs to be accurate to avoid missing any related region. In this case, graph-based index is suitable and we can apply catch-based optimization or heterogeneous hardware to speed up searching. In the candidate filtering layer, we want to store all the data within limited memory usage. Therefore, we can use encoding-based index 
and explore optimization opportunities such as data locality and uh, parallel, parallel data processing. In the last layer, we only need to process a small number of candidates for each query. Therefore, we can use original web data. However, the original web data for the whole data set, set will be large. Therefore, we need to seek for low-cost storage solutions, such as solid-state disks. This framework is still in design, and we are expecting to, to work out a prototype in a couple of months. Okay, I think that's all. Thank you for listening.